Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, we're gonna talk about the Gratista Plus. I've gotten so many questions about, you know, whether I like it, how's it going. It's been a while. I at least did the unboxing video August 31st. So it's been a few months. I typically don't like to review items that I get immediately. I feel like I need to give it a few months. In this case, I took four months to actually really get my thoughts together, get the vibe, you know, of the machine, whether I like it or not. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I've been getting so many questions. So let's get into it. So here is my machine i got the Curtista plus in the color sea salt and i know there's a Curtista pro so a little bit about that i did look into it and the only difference with the pro and the plus is that the pro allows you to brew and steam the milk at the same time the Curtista plus does not do that but when i started reading into like voltage issues in the u.s it said that most likely you're not gonna be able to do that function because of voltage issues and I didn't want to deal with it I went down a reddit hole about people in the US buying this machine the the pro and not being able to use it to the fullest so if you're gonna end up with the pro and still have to do the brewing and the steaming separately then you might as well go with the plus that's all I'm gonna say about the pro and that is why I got the plus I had so many people recommending the pro but I noticed that these were people that were out of the US so I got the plus and I honestly don't mind it in case you guys are new I did get the Curtista plus in August and then I think maybe two weeks in maybe three weeks in I can't quite remember I noticed that the crema wasn't as rich as I remember it being from like any of my other machines the Essenza plus and the Essenza Mini, which by the way, both of my sisters now have those machines. So with the Crema not being as, I don't know, the same as the other like smaller machines, I did call customer service and you know, within the troubleshooting and everything, they, I was still kind of getting some like thin Crema. And she did say, you know, if with the more you use the machine, the better the Crema will be. And at first I didn't want to believe it, but I think that's true. With the new machine that I got, Obviously they replaced it. I, I got a whole new Curtista Plus. The crema was almost the same as the other one. It kind of makes me wonder maybe the other one wasn't broken or you know a bad machine to begin with. But I didn't want to call them back. So I'm like, I'm just gonna keep it, whatever. And so I started using it and the more I used it, the better the crema got. I don't know what it is. Some capsules do make more crema and I even read it in a book. I forgot where I read it. Usually coffee beans that have been infused with flavors or even like within the Nespresso like the baristas, those tend to create less crema. I don't know what it is, it just happens. But even the crema that it has been producing on those capsules, I think it's fine. At one point, I thought that the crema looked better every time I had the milk temp too hot instead of ideal. But then I'm like, how does that have to do with the machine? Like, what is that? There's like no like correlation with milk steaming and espresso within the machine. At least not in me, because they all both come out through different spouts. So I decided to change my milk temp back to ideal, because sometimes I felt like the milk was too hot. And even then, now that it's the milk temperature is ideal, I still think that the crema is good. So maybe the representative, what she said, the more you use it, the better the crema will be. I think that's that's real so if you have a machine and are struggling with the crema and you don't think it's the machine i think the more you use it give it some time i think the crema will be okay otherwise then i would just suggest calling customer service and seeing what they can do because the machine is definitely not inexpensive it's a very expensive machine and compared to like the bambino plus that i've been looking into um it's a little bit more expensive than even that machine. Why? Because you're paying for the convenience. You're paying for a machine that you don't really have to mess anything with it. You just put a capsule, put the um, recipe that you want, and it'll make it for you. So it's convenience that you're paying for, but I don't know if it's 100% worth it for the price. Like right now, I think with Williams-Sonoma, yeah, $6.49. The Bambino Plus that I've been eyeing and it's still out of stock in the color I want, that one's $500. So again, you're paying for the convenience of not having to mess with rounds or anything like that. You just pop in a pod and you go. The machine is nice. I love it. I have been enjoying it. I prefer it mainly for latte art and 
Honestly, the espresso within the original line, regardless of whatever machine you have, I feel like original line espresso is a lot richer, a lot nicer, silkier. It's obviously extracted a different way. And I think that's why it's better espresso with original line. But I've been enjoying it mainly for latte art. So if you're wondering, do I really need this machine? You really don't. But if you know that you want latte art, you want to be able to do a true cappuccino, a true latte, a true flat white, all of these drinks are different because of their milk texture and the amount of milk you use and all of that. So that's why I like it. You really can't get the milk texture that you need for a cappuccino latte uh, whatever flat white with a uh, aeroshino frother because all of these drinks require steamed milk something that you're not really going to get from a like frother that just sits on your counter you need steam to pass through the milk and the way that you steam it will give you different results i don't know how they do it with this machine but for some reason each setting gives you different like texture in the milk. The flat white is my favorite for latte art. Setting number one, it's very silky, very just easy to work with and I love it. I still haven't mastered it to the fullest, but I like flat white setting, um, setting number one for latte art. And then flat white, what it is, it's similar to a latte, but the milk texture is just thinner, like less foamy, less frothy. I'm talking about a macchiato, a true macchiato would be something where you would put the espresso. Although this one, for some reason, does the macchiato the way that Starbucks would do a macchiato. But the foam itself is perfect for macchiato. So macchiato is usually the espresso and then you put a little dollop of milk foam on top. Um, and then the latte and then cappuccino, you get a lot of foam with the cappuccino setting. So you kind of start to see like the money, it, to me, is in the milk steaming wand and the convenience of the machine to do these recipes. So if you're not really into all these recipes, if all you want is the original line espresso capsules to be able to use those and then just have like a normal frother, then you don't really need the Cortista. But if you really want to hone in on milk textures and recipes, then the Cortista might be for you. Okay, so I wanted to bring you guys up close to the machine just to show you how it looks. I, I think the color white makes it look a lot nicer versus any other color that they offer. But like I said, they have tons of colors, whatever floats your boat. Here is where you would put the capsules and, and then, you know, close it. And then here's the start button. It has a three second heat up time, which is amazing. I like that you can brew Lungo. I know it's Lungo, but this is my accent, Lungo. Um, espresso and then Ristretto. So you can do those and not have to do anything with the milk. You have that option. And then you have flat white, cafe latte, cappuccino, latte macchiato. And then again, if you just want to brew, um, sorry, if you just want to milk steam, then you can do that here. And then you can actually change the settings. Like if you want to change the setting to, this is what the flat, flat white would be but if you want something more of like a foamy like fluffy macchiato or um a cappuccino then you can go up up i think up to eight let me see yep up to eight and same thing with each recipe you can alter the amount into the coffee amounts if you want espresso or longo or even more than that i wouldn't recommend it because then it would be watered down but it lets you do that so these are all the little settings and then to clean your machine they recommend it once a month to do the cleaning like your milk steam one which is also very very easy you just go to that setting and follow what they tell you it's super easy that's what i love about this machine is that everything is just user friendly even descaling it'll let you know when it's time to descale whereas this one um I have yet to see a light. I just do it every three months, but this one will tell you. In here is where all your capsules go after they've been brewed. If you have a smaller cup that you need raised, you would use this. This is the milk steam wand, super easy to clean. This is how your milk gets heated along with the steaming. And then this comes off to clean it out. This little red, oh, this little red thing goes up 
through the metal when it's time to empty it out but honestly i just empty it out way before that because i've noticed if i don't empty it out soon enough the coffee will start to stain the base since it's white you can almost see like i need to do like a magic eraser or something but yeah and if you don't want to do that then the red dot will pop up and it'll say hey it has too much liquid time to empty it out but that's overall what the machine looks like and then it has a good amount of i don't know if you guys can see but the water tank i don't have to fill it out that much it's a huge water tank and i love that about one it. thing i did want to mention and when i first got the machine i was completely confused and i was like oh maybe i don't want it because of that i kind of want you know cold froth um when you're steaming the milk it's counterintuitive to want it to do it cold because you need steam to be hot in order to steam milk <laughs> and so at first i couldn't quite comprehend why it wouldn't do it cold but if you think about it when you go to starbucks they don't froth the milk for you and i think even on tiktok they make fun of people that ask for cold foam over hot drinks but just letting you know it doesn't do it cold you can lower the milk temp um, all the way to like 50 degrees and it'll feel a little warm usually i keep it at ideal but if you're wondering it doesn't froth cold it just wouldn't make sense and so usually when i want to do a nice latte i'll brew my espresso shots and i won't use the milk steam one i'll just pour over my milk and call it a day so any of these coffee recipes that you get from the curtista um they all will be hot drinks unless you want to you know take that hot milk and put it over ice it just doesn't make sense to me so i've gone i've gotten over that now if i do want something cold like i said i'll just add milk without frothing it or i'll even use my arashino with a cold froth but obviously that's a different milk texture if i do a like macchiato that's the only drink that i find to be okay doing the recipe that they call it and adding ice later um i always add ice later but usually all the other recipes if i need them iced it's I just do the uh, Hiroshino. I hope that makes sense, but you don't steam milk to add ice later to it. I never use the milk steaming for my iced coffees. That just never happens anymore. And I just kind of got that idea out of my head. Um, now I just froth my milk cold from the Hiroshino if I need it and then put it in my drinks. But usually if it's an iced latte that I want from the Curtista, then I just brew my shots of espresso add the ice add the milk that's it hopefully that helps and maybe that might steer you away from the curtista like i said all these recipes from the curtista are mainly catering to hot drinkers and correct me if i'm wrong but that's just my understanding so yeah let's brew something i'm gonna brew forest black i don't know if these are still available with the original line but i haven't tried them and i really want to try them this will be kind of like a taste test and then also a way to show you guys how the machine works so let's brew these let me get a cup and some milk one second as always the angle is kind of weird in this little spot but i just wanted to see what nespresso says about this capsule because like i said i haven't tried it and i just want to know what i'm about to drink it's still available um it's wood and spice notes level seven and it's only it's a level intensity seven and they only recommend it to brew as espresso which is perfect because we're gonna do a latte and then um it says wood and spice notes for the profile aromatic notes wood and spicy so woody and spicy i think i'm gonna put some ph delight to it and go from there so let's try it on its own and see and then this way you guys can see the crema. We'll use my little espresso so you guys can see through it as it brews. And now on top, I'm gonna choose the cafe latte setting. 
And that setting automatically comes at number two for the milk. So usually I'll put the espresso cup. The milk steam pitcher will have two different lines. This is your max line. This is your minimum line. If it's less than that, then it'll have a hard time steaming your milk. I usually just do minimum. That's what we're going to do. This is whole milk. You can do oat milk or anything like that. But if the oat milk doesn't have a barista edition uh, written on the label, then it's going to be hard to... It'll be hard to do latte art, so I'm not necessarily going to do latte art right now. We're going to do just a latte. All right, so I'm just going to press the button to start. And then we're doing two shots. The machine will automatically tell you that it's time to start the milk. But if you want to do two shots, then you can just toggle back where it says start coffee. Insert your capsule. Start the coffee one more time. And then this is your double shot of espresso. Normally I would put it in a cup, but just for show reasons, I wanted to do it in this little espresso cup so you guys can see the amount of crema that I get. And these are two shots. I think it's pretty good. I don't know, what do you guys think? I think it's pretty good. So now we can do the milk and the machine will automatically say start the milk. So I press it and then I literally just leave it there. I don't do anything else. Let it do its thing. While the milk is still frothing, I'm gonna taste this just to see what it tastes like. It does smell woody. Wow, that's strong, but I don't, I don't mind it. It's definitely woody and spicy. I don't mind it though. It's not bitter at all in my opinion. Okay. Now that the milk is done, I'm just going to pour the espresso in my cup and then we'll put the milk over it. And then something neat about the machine is that when you're done with the milk, your machine will automatically purge the, the steam one. So you just let it go down. Actually, I'm going to wipe this milk first, let it go down and it'll start steaming, cleaning the one. And that's it. Again, after that, you would have to do that once a month where you really go in and like thoroughly clean it inside. And it's super easy to do, but your machine does that regularly. I don't know if you guys can see, I'm gonna take you guys in front of it. So that's the, the milk. It's a little thick, thicker than what you would get with um, setting number one, but it's not that thick, but that's like the perfect texture for latte. You can swirl it around. I know some people like to swirl it around just so that you have all that texture you know, remix because sometimes the foam will settle out, but that's your latte. Super delicious. Oh my God, I think I put too much. I'm just going to try it without any syrups or anything. That's pretty good. That pot is very, very nice. I think that one would even be nice with like iced coffee. I want to add pH to light. So let me add that. Give me one second. I'm just going to add a little bit of pH to light to the latte. And then give it a little mix. Yum. And I didn't even add a lot. I feel like that um, capsule meshes really well with like the spiciness of the pH delight because the, the pot is actually woody and spicy and this is pretty good like that. That's very nice. I don't know if I'm missing anything. I feel like I'm covering pretty much everything um if you guys want to see certain like aspects of the machine in a different video put them in the comment section for example how to clean the steam wand a daily cleaning which there is also a daily cleaning that you have to do where you put the milk jug with hot water i think or warm water and then run the steam wand so that you can clean it out daily it takes 
not even a minute it's really fast but overall as far as like an overall review of this machine i think it's a really nice machine to have i do not regret buying it i really enjoy having it and again i feel like the espresso with any original line machine is top notch versus the virtual line um, so if you are getting into more espresso drinks and you just like espresso better consider buying an original line machine because i feel like the espresso it's where it's at with it i mean the whole line is espresso that's all you're gonna get whether it's a lungo or a ristretto espresso the whole line of original is espresso whereas with virtuo then you get the option of also having coffee so kind of like cured coffee but yeah the cortista i love it i mainly love it for the milk steaming capacity i think that's the only difference that it sets it apart from everything else with the recipes and all of that hopefully that makes sense i feel like sometimes i just ramble on without making any sense but hopefully this did make sense and if it didn't or if you still have questions about this machine leave them in the comment section and then you can also find me on instagram where i typically you know we'll use this machine i'll change sometimes the settings and show you how it works but yeah find me on instagram and i'd be happy to help you on either platform i'm always like answering questions and i love it i love interacting with you guys but yeah that is it for today's video hopefully with all this information you can decide whether you want it or not thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye